so we have a huge job on today. That there is slurry full to the top. No more can possibly fit down. The situation needs to be rectified and we do not have a choice, as you can see. Now, in an ideal world, an ideal world, we wouldn't do this because we'd have a million gallons of storage somewhere and we'd only put slurry on when the land needed it and it would benefit growing, not just because we need to. So this slurry tank runs the length of that shed there and it is this wide. From here to about, uh, I'd say here. It's not wide at all. Um, it literally holds 20,000 gallons of slurry-ish ish um that equates to about a month's worth of storage maybe slightly longer if, the, if it's drier and obviously if it's been raining um our tank in the yard collects all the water from the gutters and it goes into a central water tank and then the overflow from that tank runs into the slurry which isn't ideal because then obviously every time it rains it raises up a lot faster so as it has just had a torrential downpour the slurry is full it can literally raise because it's such a small tank. It could raise three feet in a night. It is less than ideal, like I've said, but the alternative is putting up a new store, which is what we are looking at doing now. And yet again, it costs a fortune. All big farm improvements are infrastructure and they all cost a fortune. So when this shed was built in 1994, it was way ahead of its time. It was a, it wasn't all singing, all dancing shed. This was, and obviously, like everything in farming, you've got to move with the times. And obviously, um, here's its counterpart. And over there somewhere, or over here somewhere, we haven't decided it's going to be like slurry storage for this shed. This little store will then be piped across. Um, go into there and then be pumped either into a tower or a lagoon a concrete tower so this is why our mud guard's missing <laughs> if any of you have ever wondered why the mud guard is missing this is why because it hits on that door there and you can't get close enough to get the whisk in so the mud guard is safe in the shed it is not broken or just pulled off so what Ray's doing is he's sinking the whisk into the slurry it's on a wide angle it can get right in and then he'll reverse up and then he'll tilt it right down and then he'll whisk the slurry. I'll have to move over here because it's really loud. So the slurry tank we've got, we bought it in um, 2016 when we came to the farm. Um, it was 8,800 quid. Let that sink in. That's cheap. That's bloody cheap. Um, it's completely standard other than it has an extra um like sucky pipe thing on the side of it whatever the hell one of them's called a port i don't know uh, it's a major 1700 gallon i think it's gallon yeah i think it is that's how you measure slurry isn't it so none of the land up here is able to have slurry put on at this time of the year this at a push if we're desperate but obviously look at this He's sitting in water. So Roy is going the long way round, as in like on the actual road, um, down the village, and I'll show you him. You'll be able to see him in a minute. Um, going down, there's 40 acres down there. It's not in an MVZ, can travel on it, just because of the soil type, I think. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it is desperate times, different, like desperate measures. I there you can see him. So this here is the village. And that road that you can see is called North End. And there's a South End, you know, the usual. You'll see him in a second coming past. He'll be driving really slowly and respectfully, um, as Roy always does. And like literally, there's been times before when there's uh, a post van or something uh, parked at the side of the road or a builder's van parked at the side of the road and Roy hasn't been able to get past without going on someone's verge. So he's turned around and gone back later. There he is. Tiny. 
so i should really input the video i once made a tiktok about um there was a man in the village it was literally during silage time um so these guys here were mega mega busy bear in mind they don't use them fields other than for cropping so it's not like you know they're up and down every day kind of thing and to be honest 99 percent of the time they use a different entrance over there but that one field there um they there's a, a gateway onto the village and they use the village road just so they're not banging into each other coming into gateways i think anywho um this one fella in the village is a proper arsehole i don't even mind telling you proper arsehole i'll put the conversation in from the village whatsapp i blocked all the names out but i shouldn't have done because they're disgusting um he was gonna be let's all park our cars at the side of the road to stop them coming through uh, let's give them a taste of their own medicine and all of this is because there was um someone had obviously let a car past and driven onto the grass verge which by the way is probably owned by the council actually oh you should have seen the slate in i'll put the video in i'll find it and i'll put it in just so you can laugh it in with me i was absolutely outraged it's disgusting and he then started a petition <laughs> a petition group and the other week in the village hall there was a uh uh, let's stop tractors driving up north end like honestly i can't even tell you what an absolute it's just it's they really have nothing better to do with their lives it's crazy it's crazy mate you've bought a house in the countryside get over yourself if it were up to us because if you post something like this on tiktok for instance you get loads of people jump or especially twitter wow especially twitter if you post something like this on twitter all you get is um people from the rivers trust um, uh, I don't know, advisors to the agricultural industry jumping on saying, um, you know, what benefit is it to the crops at this time of year? Why are you spreading slow? Because we need to, mate. If you're going to pay for um, a tower to get put up, give it over. But, you know, we're saving up, so get over yourself. I do find it a really interesting conversation to have and to read other people having online. Obviously, we know that spreading slurry and muck on the land at this time of year is not beneficial to grass growth or crop growth in any way, but its needs must. And we're also aware that it's slightly damaging to the land because obviously poaching and you're running over it. But the alternative is your slurry overflowing and to the detriment of your animals. It needs taking out, there is no alternative. And to improve that system, that farming system that you are, you know, obviously taking part in, it requires huge investments because it's all to do with like big infrastructure. And then you get people whinging that you're doing the wrong thing. And yet they're also whinging when people are helped out with grants and such like um, for, you know, slurry storage, um, roof, roofing over silage pits, for instance. I also, we were having the conversation last night about grants in general, and I really wish Roy would say stuff on YouTube because he's he's so clever and he really, um, he would have something to contribute. This here, it's dead nice, isn't it? It's lovely, it's lovely. The functionality of this silage pit has not changed because it's got a roof on. Yes, it's slightly cleaner, there's slightly less waste, but for us as a farmer, taking silage out of a pit, putting it in a keening and feeding it the cows, the functionality has not changed. It's not benefited us. It's benefited the environment, so they say, because of the water runoff and, you know, keeping separate dirty water, clean water separate. But it's not benefited us. It's not changed the actual functionality of the yard. And then you, you see, like, people are like, oh, my God, you've, you've had loads of money spent on grants. Yes, but it hasn't changed the way we're farming, to be quite honest, at all. It hasn't changed anything that we're doing. I just think environmentally when people um it's in all the media and on twitter and all you know people are talking about it farmers need to do better we need to do better we need to improve this we need to improve that you forget that you need over a hundred thousand pounds to invest in a new say i was gonna get um it's a lot of money that's a lot a lot a lot of money and yet you know farmers do better farmers do better well how are we meant to do better without a hundred grand in our pocket i mean seriously these things have to be SAFO compliant it's not just something that you can do and it works it's got to be signed off by the environment agency it's got to be signed off by numerous people um natural england you know all of these things 
in the future, when this clean air strategy comes into play, people will have to not only cover their free lagoon, um, but you're going to have to capture the gases when you're stirring the slurry. How, how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? Other than with massive investments, which people don't have because everything is so expensive. Like your fuel feed fertilizer, I know I say it quite a lot, it's gone up so much that people can't actually afford to feed their animals and yet they're being expected to invest in large infrastructure to, to benefit the environment that doesn't actually benefit them. Yeah. I've got the right hat on today. On a mission. We're just literally spreading some muck. Um, it's actually really crappy um, weather. It's really wet, like really wet, but needs must. Um, the slurry is actually full. So we're just, um, as you can see, just tankery tankering, really. Um, somebody asked before why I'd come on. I'd come on a load. I was on live on TikTok with Joe, and someone said, "Why are you not driving the Valtra?" Because it's boring. That's why. No, I'm joking. Um, I was videoing in the passenger seat, being silly, and you can't video on a public highway and um, drive a tractor. That's very illegal. So that's why I wasn't driving the Valtra. But yeah. I am now very driving. Yay, for the boys. It's dead exciting. Has anyone ever seen um, Ollie's cool wall? Um, he has like ultra cool sub zero and then like really rubbish. And then below really rubbish is cow spec. Can I just tell you? We are in cow spec right now. To be fair, we're always in cow spec. Unashamedly. So we have to do this because we've no storage. As I've said before, limited storage where it says not no storage, limited storage. It lasts about a month, doesn't it? Which is not, unless if it's raining. So the options are for another slurry storage. Obviously we will need this anyway going forwards with going into dairy and we will need another store. So we have had quotes off several different people. We've had quotes off stores, perma store, um, concrete ones uh, from like Craven Concrete. Um, God, who else? And all of them are looking at like it's gonna be above 100 grand for the size of slurry store that we want. And yeah, it's pretty expensive. And um, the cheaper option going forward would be looking at putting a hole in the ground, otherwise known as a lagoon. Um, our neighbors just had one. It's amazing, it's wonderful. The only thing is we are a really small farm. Personally, Roy doesn't maybe not share this opinion with me, but like it would literally take over a whole field. You know, that's my like overwhelming like view of them having just looked from the outside. They're massive. That was my view. They are huge. But cost wise, they're probably the most sensible option. We have not ruled anything out and we have not decided anything at all. But obviously going into dairy and we will need a decent sized slurry store going forward. What are your opinions? I would be happy to hear what will the people would do in this situation it's greenfield what would you do so you've got your big shed put up and uh, you're going to be milking 120 jerseys on two robots they're on a grazeway system so they're in and out all the time what would you do if you were going to start afresh what would you do now hold on a minute i feel a bit tight wait there not that he needs a publicity but i felt a bit tight leaving him out so i'll put that one on for a minute <laughs> so i'm gonna make some tea I'm gonna edit this video. I'm also gonna just do a little bit of work now while Roy finishes off the slurry and I make some tea. Um, I'm gonna do some work on the husky that I started. I'll show you him, hold on. So here is the husky that I have nearly finished. He needs a dark a bit here. Um, he had like a little, you know, like a little stripe that came forwards that I've missed off. 
but yeah, he's this big. He is made out of 100% husky fur and wool from our farm. Actually, tell a lie, the background has some black alpaca in it. So, thanks for watching. If you got this far, stick your opinions below. What would you do? That's what I want to know. What would you do in our shoes? Which is something I find interesting. We haven't planned. We've looked, obviously, and explored a lot of options, but we haven't made any final decisions on anything yet. And we're very torn between price and what we want. Um, two completely different things, obviously. It always is, isn't it? So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Isn't that cool? Yeah, and you can wave at him. Look him over top of you. Yeah, it looks like they're going that way. Are you gonna wave? Yeah. See, they go the other way. They're not. They're gonna go this way because right? they live over there. Right, you're gonna wave. I went over to him and they just said that the cloud had got too low so they'd been forced to land and if it hadn't cleared they were just gonna leave it there and then come back for it obviously tomorrow or something. Um, of, they've come back from Preston so they were on like the last leg before home time because it's obviously going dark um, so yeah that was interesting bonus support your air ambulance people we might need them if you die in the middle of a field like that who else is going to come and get you